welcome back. I hope you had a nice coffee break. And welcome to meet me, Dimitri Zakharov from Parkside, quality engineer, senior quality engineer. I'm sorry. Um, now it's about uh, the topic, do we need quality assurance in HL software development? Uh, to be honest, I'm really curious about that. And yeah, I want to hand over to you and the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. I have, I hope you had a great coffee break. Yes, as it was already mentioned, I'm not a uh, agile coach or scrum master. I'm a QA engineer. And that's why my topic is about agile quality assurance. To be precise, I'd like to talk about the question, do we leave QA in agile software development? And the answer is pretty obvious. Yes, of course we need. And what else would you expect to hear from QA engineer, right? Uh, but now seriously, is quality important today or agile means that we need to be fast with software development. We need to reduce time to market and there is no time for high quality, and we just need to accept that. Uh, and at the same time, our job, job of QA engineers is to be invisible. When the application works properly, a user or a customer doesn't even know that someone worked on software testing. But once the bug appears and annoys them, uh, QAs are becoming very visible. Everyone wants to know who tested that. And uh, in fact, today we all are users of many applications which make our life easier or depending on quality, even more uh, difficult. A couple of weeks ago, I was on the train and I did notice when the guy checking tickets in the train came to my seat and asked to show the ticket. I opened the app and just realized that my ticket disappeared from there. I restarted the app and saw something like that. And then I restarted it again and again. Uh, and it was super embarrassing because I don't speak German. <laughs> and, uh, and the guy was already a bit tired and angry. And I restarted again and again. And in the end, I managed to show the ticket. But after that, I was thinking, do they have the same quality of software which controls trains and which is responsible for my safety and safety of other thousands of people in the train? And I hope not. Uh, but in fact, there were cases of train accidents caused by software bugs. So poor quality uh, of software can be annoying like this spinner or even lead to money waste and uh, safety critical incidents. Uh, but let's move from uh, stories to facts. According to research published by Capgemini recently, around 46% of companies are considering increased software or uh, product quality as a key factor for digital transformation. But at the same time, uh, less than 50% of companies applied best practices for effective and efficient uh, quality assurance process. And, uh, but should quality assurance uh, be part of software development process? And to answer to that, let's think about a uh, definition of done of a user story or a feature. Would you expect that uh, the story presented during sprint review uh, already completely uh, finished? Or, um, and by that, I mean, you definitely do not expect that next sprint or iteration capacity is needed for re-implementation of something what was tested right after review. That's why uh, testing activities should be part of definition of done. And if the feature or user story is not tested yet, it should not be ready for review. Since uh, testing activities is part of a uh, uh, software development process, let's talk about the way how it works. Look at this picture. Uh, you can see a typical waterfall process, specification, design, implementation, testing, maintenance. But quite often it happens that companies uh, call iteration sprints, maybe shorten them a bit, and then follow the same process, as if uh, calling that HL makes it no longer waterfall. But since the presentation is about uh, quality assurance or testing, I'd like to talk about these two parts of the same process, implementation and testing which should be in fact the same process uh, within one uh, iteration. But who is responsible for quality assurance in a child uh, development team? And there are many options here. Option number one uh, sounds like a joke testing by users, but in fact, I heard from some customers that something like 
our users are quick enough and if there are any bugs they will report us immediately and i was surprised to hear that first time but uh, in fact uh, users will make some kind of testing but make sure they are not the only testers otherwise you have risk to lose them as well option number one is testing by product owner or product manager or even business analyst mm, this approach already can be reasonable uh, since the product person uh, knows the product better, uh, knows user wishes, use cases, and uh, can do this work. But at the same time, uh, product owners uh, quite often have lack of uh, technical knowledge. That's why they can struggle with uh, performing technical tasks, which are also part of software tester job. And in this case, you can use a hybrid approach which can be, for example, behavior-driven development when the product owner or product manager writes extended uh, use cases uh, in a typical user story format as a user, I want to, so that. And a technical person, it can be software engineer or test engineer, uh, can automate these steps so that it will be executed and tested automatically, but test scenarios are written by a product owner. And another solution can be to use a shared QA service. Uh, it's most probably um, applicable for uh, large products where uh, several development team works on the same uh, product. In this case, development team can, uh, can, have, um, can work without any QA engineers, but use uh, resources of a sh shared uh, team, so-called system team, which is similar to what SAFE, for example, recommends. It can be only QA engineers or also other skills like DevOps, security, and so on. QA buys uh, this team is responsible for writing test strategies, creating and maintaining frameworks, and uh, also performing non-functional testing, which is also important part of quality assurance, such as load and performance testing, usability testing, security testing. Independently on having a dedicated QA person or shared QA team uh, or not having QAs at all, it might be a case that developer need to perform software testing. But in this case, you need to solve a list of typical issues related to that. Uh, think number one, a historical reason to have a separate dedicated person making quality assurance is an ability to critically evaluate your own work. Or your own code and that's why it's nice to have another person reviewing that in the past i also heard about cases when a software developer tested his own job and then it's passed uh, and of course it's better to have a person with uh, another perspective to the same topic even if you decided that you don't have any q engineers or it's happened that you don't have q engineers make sure that the quality is still priority for software developers uh, quite often it happens that um, uh, software engineers would rather start working on a new feature than uh, spend time on reviewing someone's feature. Uh, since the reason, uh, quite popular reason for changing team setup, optimizing something, uh, reducing some skill profiles is uh, budget optimization. Uh, make sure that it's still efficient because uh, I also had examples when a company decided to cut QAs to increase developers um, department for example and then it the same it was the same amount of delivered features but just other more expensive people doing the same job um, yeah and if you do have uh, developers working on software testing on other skills um, you should enable upskilling for the team. It can be uh, workshops or uh, internal consul consultants can also support that as a solution. For example, at Parkside, we have some academy talks where uh, our colleagues can share their experience about some topics. And uh, we also had in the past uh, example, when one of our test automation engineer uh, made some set of uh, test automation workshops which were helpful for uh, software developers and then they, they can reuse that uh, one of the quite popular misconceptions about, about agile is the term development team 
since in the term there is a word development, quite often people believe that uh, it means there is no room uh, for other specialists like QA or DevOps or security. And the idea of all the agile guides, even though they group all skills together by the term uh, development team, is to have different skills in these development teams. And the similar uh, thing to that is the quite popular concept of T-shaped specialist, which actually was um, introduced uh, many years ago, but uh, became quite popular now with agile software development. Uh, that means that a specialist should, uh, should have uh, main expertise, but additionally to this main expertise uh, has a broad set of other skills. And the misconception here is that this person should not only be familiar with these uh, topics, but also perform those tasks. So developers should work on all sort of QA, on, I don't know, security, DevOps, business analysts. But the original idea is to have other people having the same uh, skills as a main skill and other skills additional to that. And the benefit from that is to better understand other team members. And also, as an example, QA, who is familiar with software development, uh, can write automated tests and also understand better um, software architecture and um, find more bugs, for example. And vice versa, a developer who is working, um, who is familiar with uh, basics of quality assurance can prevent some bugs. Uh, but independently on team setup, uh, quality should be everyone's responsibility in a agile team. And even though it's mostly about changing mindset and having a agile mindset, uh, there are some action items which companies can do to uh, promote this culture of quality. Um, first of all, to promote uh, knowledge sharing about quality assurance via, for instance, quality um, community of practices. And as I already mentioned at Parkside, we have academy talks, uh, uh, which also quite often about uh, quality. Another thing is to have uh, quality oriented targets for a company as OKRs or any other um, uh, targets, global targets or personal development targets. And last but not least is uh, very important that quite often uh, companies define quality oriented guiding principles for the company, but then deprioritize uh, quality tasks, put them uh, low in backlog, and then it leads to a decreased level of willingness to follow these guidelines. Another quite popular misconception is about agile values. So I'm pretty sure every one of you at least once uh, heard something like, we don't need documentations, we are agile, or stop talking about processes, we are, you are not agile. And in fact, even though working software is still much more important than documentation, we still need documentation and processes. And speaking about processes, it's really beneficial to involve uh, QA engineers early in the process. So if you do have a QA engineers in your team, um, so it quite often happens that uh, QA engineers start working only when a feature completely developed. So they got some feature and then they start to investigate it. But it's really beneficial to involve them during product backlog refinements or uh, during sprint planning. Uh, during these activities, QA engineers can already um, contribute to defining of acceptance criteria, of estimating testing efforts, and also already questioning some requirements, which lead to preventing some bugs already before software development started. Another important point, uh, communication is really important. And even additionally to that, uh, so QA engineers should be involved early in the process. They also should have ability to communicate with all the stakeholders. Uh, I had an example also in the past, one of, in one of my first projects where I worked as a QA engineer, uh, back then we had kind of misunderstood or misimplemented Scrum. So we did have iteration and old Scrum artifacts, 
but uh, we didn't deliver actually to production after each iteration. We released it to pre-production environment and we also didn't have direct communication with uh, main stakeholder, which was also a user. And uh, in the end, uh, six or seven months later, when we did release to real production environment, uh, we realized to be precise during database migration, we realized that instead of communicated 600 of lines of some customer information in a database, we got 600 of thousands lines. And of course our application died and we needed to re-implement everything involved uh, software architects for that. And it costed a lot. Another example of miscommunication and example why communication is important is uh, communication inside the team. So, so between QA and software engineers, between uh, QAs inside the team, uh, and quite often at least that the same job is done twice. Uh, for example, some QA engineers who are uh, who is responsible for uh, UI testing um, can do the same work what backend test engineers are doing. So the same test can cover the same logic, and it's just double price. And I had another example about communication between software developers and QA engineers. So I was invited to one of the sprint review of another team in the company I used to work uh, for. And uh, that was quite old team. They worked together already several years and people knew that they have some communication issues between developers, QAs, who's more important and so on. And one of the developer presented a nice, a really nice a test automation framework he implemented and uh, everyone was super happy. But after that, one of the main stakeholders who worked for this project for a while uh, asked, but two QAs make the same tests? And he said, actually, I don't know what they're doing. That was super sad, but that happens. So communication can cost a lot. And since I mentioned already that uh, quite often it happens that QAs are starting work when some, something is ready to be tested, uh, there are some activities uh, which they in fact can do uh, during um, implementation process. Uh, depending on level of documentation needed, it can be already uh, test cases prepared and all mind map prepared. Um, since they already were part of a requirements analysis. An important thing is test automation. Even though it's not a technical presentation and I'm not going into this detail, even though I would like to, uh, but uh, I should say that test automation is a really important part of agile quality assurance because agile quality assurance is impossible without test automation. Because before each release, you expect that your previous work works pretty fine. So you need to have some regression test and manual testing can take weeks. So you cannot release actually every second week, for example, every third week. That's why you can have test automation. And uh, then there are several concepts and ideally test automation engineer can start already working on test automation even before features released uh, or implemented. So uh, it's similar to test driven development when the a developer writes unit tests and then until they are positive. And uh, the same can be done with front end or back end or end to end tests in general. So by the end of implementation of the feature, uh, tests can be already executed and then a release can be done immediately. And since I already mentioned that test automation is super important, uh, here you can see some calculation of uh, return on investment of test automation. It's a super complicated formula, but I'm a mathematician, trust me, it leads to a lot of money savings. Uh, but in general, yeah, with each iteration of, I don't know, with each sprint and each release, uh, you will get money back because you should not uh, re, re execute the same test manually again and again. And I had also another example of the project where we didn't have any test automation. So we have customers who are ready for automation and understand the investment for that. But also, of course, we have a small project where, yeah, it's not that obvious why they need it. And 
in the end, uh, even though they saved early money not performing any automated tests, but then we needed to just replace some library and everything was broken and the regression test took several weeks and then again and again. And yeah, so it's better to automation early. And another money numbers. <laughs> so um, according to research uh, done by uh, Gartner, some time ago, uh, the companies who introduced true culture of quality, which means environment where um, employees uh, not only following uh, quality guidelines, but also uh, listening constantly about quality, see other people doing uh, quality oriented um, tasks, uh, they, those companies uh, make 60, uh, 46% uh, fewer mistakes, which lead to potential savings of uh, $67 million uh, per 5,000 5, employees. And to finish my speech, I would like to buy this uh, quote, quality is never an accident. It's always the result of intelligent effort. And independently on the team setup uh, framework you choose, uh, quality is still important. Thank you for your attention. And now I would like to ask you if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but also if you have any opinion, even different to that, please share it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, would be better. Okay, English. hello. <laughs> it's gonna be difficult for me, but I try. Uh, an example, a small scrum team. Uh, are you as a QA part of the scrum team or are you a separate member? Yeah, it depends actually. So since Parkside works for different projects, also small and big uh, projects, uh, in normally um, I would say that yes, part of scrum team, but not necessarily participating in every discussions. For example, sometimes it happens that our QA engineers work for several projects. And of course, there are some meetings uh, simultaneously, right? But still, it's better to have them inside team and better also to have as less project as possible. Yeah. Okay, so he's inside the Scrum team, so yeah. he's also inside of the sprint. Yes, exactly. So uh, do you have as a QA separate test stories? Would you suggest uh, to do it? Yeah, it depends actually in my one of my previous companies, I also had some kind of workshop about that because it's there is no right answer for that, right? Because it's hard to then calculate your available capacity, right? And uh, estimate stories. So what we did, we had two options. Option number one was to, do, to actually exclude QA capacity at all, and then estimate only like feature in general, considering that yes, uh, it has some, um, I don't know, approximate, percent for QA, right? So just extending each uh, user story by like estimations. Uh, but because just QA job can be done only by QA member, if it's for example, one person in the team of I know, nine developers, right? Uh, but also depending on the team setup, for example, uh, in one of my project, um, I had the situation when I was the only QA, but others also, um, were working on QA topics. Like I was kind of consultant mostly, but they also uh, took over some tasks. And in this case, we included uh, also that to um, er everyone's kind of capacity. So for each user story, we added uh, QA as a subtask. So it's part of the same um, yeah, process. But I would definitely say that it should not be like completely another user story for uh, QA because I mean it's part of definition of the same user story. Okay, but I have the next example, okay. my example. Uh, we are IT development in a company which is also pro producing stuff. So we are developing for our own company uh, and so there are some parts of the software which you cannot test in the test environment. You have to go to the product production environment. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So when the development uh, is uh, ready with the story, definition of done, the unit tests are okay, uh, some manual tests are okay, but then you have, for instance, uh, 
you need to produce a document. Mm. So you need uh, an extra test for this one. So you are ready with the story, the story is done, but you, you are not allowed to go live because it's not fully tested. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, partly, I guess. <laughs> but uh, here also there are two, um, two possible ideas which I have. First is to have, of course, like a kind of blocker additionally for such things is a, it's kind of exception, right? But also I do believe that there is something that you can kind of mock or to uh, try to simulate before and it will be already partly tested. And then on production, work, you just need to quickly double check, which can be also part of the same story work. So I would say so. Thank you very much. And maybe additionally to that, actually one example. So for customer where like for which I work now, for example, we have kind of three environments. So one is development where we test everything like during development process where QA do a day like regular job. And then we have kind of test environment, but it also can be pre-production which repeats everything on production line. So we don't use it only for testing or for something, but we do this check like on the check, which will be the same on develop, uh, on production environment, then verify everything and then just copy exactly the same. And then it's already possible to, uh, yeah, do not spend a lot of time on production and do not uh, bro break anything uh, for customer information and so on. Right, so that it's just like the same environment on production end. Yes, okay. exactly. So this needs to be really aligned. Yeah, and that's why it's important that this environment is not used for anything else because otherwise, yeah, it will be broken, so different. Have the production, um, on this yeah. System. yeah, yeah. It also makes it difficult if it, you have some hardware. Of course, it's mm -hmm. much more difficult, but yeah. Still. What about test-driven development? What is your opinion on that? I think, I mean, the main idea of test driven development is to do firstly unit tests, which are part of developer's job. And I think it's like the best approach because they already think in advance what they need to implement. And it's really much better than write tests after that. Because if you write after that, you usually try to like make them fit to <laughs> what you already developed. So yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Hi. Um, how do you ensure that return on investment on automated tests become visible to everybody? Yeah, that's super difficult question. <laughs> and I should say that it's not always successful exp uh, explanation. Yeah, right. So, and yeah, basically we had, for example, uh, some examples, I know for updating our technical depth on everything, which normally, um, doesn't change anything for functional, right? But it affects a lot of part of software. And we just explain how much time you need to do the same work manually. And you anyways uh, should do update of libraries in a couple of years. I mean, of course it's, if it's, I don't know, a couple of months uh, projects without any plans to re-implement anything in the future, it doesn't make sense in, to do an automation. So automation should not only be, like the goal, right? So to do automation because of automation or because of wish of QA engineers who do not work, want to work on manual testing. But if it's at least um, the plan to have a uh, one year development or then maintain the same system later, you can bring these examples. Uh, for example, one more. Uh, so I work for a super like old application, uh, which was developed, I don't know, 30 years ago. And of course, no one cared about any kind of also documentation, also automation and everything. But at some point, a data, um, it's called database uh, storage. So the place where they had all the environment and infrastructure uh, said that they no longer support any of these technologies. And since no one had any, any ideas about testing, how to test this application, that was a huge project to re-implement the same uh, application using another technology. But as a requirement, it was like, look at this application. You need to do the same, but using another programming language. And th that can be uh, an example also. 
yeah, to just calculate uh, how much time you need to do manual testing with each regression test. And also a good example of uh, when something is broken, what was not part of current feature. It happens quite often and customer can see that, yeah, so you need to do that. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so as a QA engineer, you're working with a lot of different products. How, if you're in early development to product, how do you define the quality to test? Do you see it as the whole uh, product that is in development or as the item that is currently being implemented? So it also it depends. Um, yeah, quite often it happens that you never know what is going next. Uh, but for example, one of the projects also we had that was quite um, clear what is going to be developed in the future. And it was also clear that we have only limited number of um, hours available for QA. And that's why we just uh, needed to think what would be the most risky part of software. And then of course, uh, we think about the big picture. But if it's um, yeah, long term, of course, we analyze firstly next iterations and keeping in mind something what can be changed in the future. And also the same for test automation. So you don't need to do any kind of automation as a priority if it's going to be changed and changed again soon. So for example, for some of the data science projects where we also work, um, we have some automation which validates some results and so on. But when, for example, algorithm is in progress, so you never know what would be expected results, it doesn't make any sense to have automation because the data uh, is not predictable and you will see another result all the time. So it's just money and time wasted. Uh, question the same aspect or something like that. Um, if, you, if you're starting a project with a customer and you say, okay, Q&A should be part of the requirement analysis. How fast or how early do you start with it? Because I'm thinking like you're building a middleware here. And if you don't take the QA with you, you're missing some points like, okay, they will throw in like documents with thousands of ambits and you're missing this. Mm -hmm. You're making not the correct proposal. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say ideally it's better to, at least on the phase when it's just business side, uh, thinking of, about uh, product itself, yeah, just at least to have some uh, sync, I don't know, weekly, right? So do not involve in each discussion, of course, QA person, just to discuss customer requirements, for example. But once a feature is in progress, so just when product owner, product manager starts working on the feature description, of course, it's already time to do it. So we had also examples when it was done only on user story levels, when, for example, feature is created completely by product owner without involvement of QA engineers, and then user stories, split, uh, it's split to user stories, and then uh, QA engineers involved. But then it also happens that uh, like particular part of the same feature kind of tested and in good quality, but the big picture, no, like the feature itself is not really ready or something is broken for that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you.
how to define any kind of matters or so to, to integrate systematic problems with quality that always arise and you know like to that you have the voice as a QA engineer because sometimes I think it's hard for you to tell people okay well you play it again and so on. I mean yes I wouldn't say that there is any kind of like methods for that but uh, mostly it depends how long you work for the same product right so uh, yeah the same uh, issue appears and appears and it's like a first candidate for test automation and it, that's actually how I first time start working on test automation because uh, that was a project where we already were about to move to maintenance phase so development capacity was reduced and but we still uh, had a lot of hot fixes every uh, I don't know sometimes every day even and I needed to recheck of course I couldn't do it like checking everything manually every day uh, but then it was like try to add on my first one of the first pictures like okay I closed that and then I closed that and then and yeah and then it became uh, clear at least by examples that yeah if you change something here and you don't have any regression testing something in different place will be broken as well but how do you report it back because like what is the sustainable solution here so what, what, what is it so really isn't systematic yeah so i mean we just calculated uh, how much uh, again effort we need to uh, make at least basic test automation uh, again it was not about uh, covering everything by automated tests because it also doesn't make any sense for a huge project but at least to have uh, the most uh, typical like risky places to be automated and also uh, of course you can write a detailed test to check everything I don't know every case edge cases and all the test techniques but it's better at least to have uh, yeah, uh, it's, it seems that time is over <laughs> uh, to uh, to cover at least smog test, which covers uh, main steps to check that everything is displayed and yeah, everything is fine. Yeah, but sometimes just uh, discussion about importance of automation to uh, take uh, more time than implementation of automated test. So sometimes just just do it. <laughs>